slightly seasoned one, but the comics are for you. So please come in, check us out. If you haven't been into our store and you live locally, please come in and check us out or check us out online. And you can see all the stuff down here at the bottom. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, my name is Kim. Um, I kind of run this store. My wife Angie is in the back. I don't know if you can see her on camera. She's waving back there. Um, she kind of owns the store, so uh, it, this is a was a was a dream of ours, and we kind of put it together last year, and we signed the lease on this about March 1st, and uh, who knew what was going to happen March 1st of last year, and it happened anyway, and we had a lease, so we went ahead and did it anyway, and we're still here, so that's a good thing. It's been almost a year. We're coming up two more weeks, and we will have been here a year, which is pretty amazing. So. Uh, we've got some great people in the audience. We appreciate that. I thought there was going to be a few more, but I think they're coming. Um, I'm going to introduce the panel, and then we'll get going. So to my left is Brandon. Brandon's one of the team here that engaged, that uh, volunteers and helps us out. Thank you um, for coming. He's been a great help to us. And Brandon, you want to say anything else? Thanks for coming. Thanks for the support. Um, look for more to come. All right. Great. Thank you, Brandon. On the far end of me is Bob, and Bob has really been a catalyst for for me in the store and for especially for this panel because well I kind of envisioned just a couple of guys getting together and talking about comics and he's like well I can get da, 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 and, and here we are this was just like three weeks ago this all came together real quick and I can't thank Bob enough for every bit of support that he has given to me and Angie in the store and it's just been phenomenal so Bob thank you do you want to say anything uh, just uh, support the store make sure that it stays here my my whole goal in all of this is just to make sure that you're in business for as long as you want. <laughs> Me, too. Me too. All right. Well, next to Bob is Danny Boyd, and Danny Boyd is a local man, uh, and he cur currently lives in Charleston, West Virginia, but he is actually from here, um, and he was gracious enough to drive all the way back up from Charleston to be with us. He has done some fabulous work on chillers um, that's in the back here. He's done carbon and salt. Um, which are right there. Um, just some fabulous work. He's also a playwright. He's done movies. Um, and his newest book is The Adventures of Wandala. And he's going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But um, Danny, if you want to go ahead and say some more that I haven't. The, the, the same as to Bob. Bob reached out to me and I said, heck yeah. I, I get. I, I get to be out in public finally. <laughs> uh, I get to see my best friend. Uh, I get to see my daughter in Baltimore, and I get to go to a ballpark I haven't been to, City Field. And the number one is that we want to support this store. This is awesome for Martinsburg, uh, and I'm just over the moon about it. So th thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. All right, and then right next to me, I'm, I'm so proud and happy to have Joe Ryband from Dynamite Comics. Um, most of this wall is Dynamite Comics, as you can see. Um, Doc Savage, Green Hornet, Vampirella, Red Sonja, uh, Charlie's Angels, man. That, I mean, <laughs> a little some, bit of everything. Some <laughs> incredible stuff is coming out of Dynamite Comics. And if you haven't read any of Dynamite Comics, I really strongly urge you to. We have a lot here in the store. Um, Joe's been looking around, and um, you know, more is coming every week. So. Um, Joe, please welcome and whatever you want to. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. You know, uh, Bob and I have known each other. I don't know quite how long. I know it's been longer than twenty years. I've been with Dynamite for twenty years. Last um, century. Yeah, but we we, uh, we worked together a, a lifetime ago, and he reached out to me and said he was living. He said he was retired and living in uh, Martinsburg, West Virginia. And I said, I you're retired. <laughs> wow. um, you got to be old to do that. Yeah, I was like, how did that happen? How do I how do I how do I sign up? Um, but very happy to be here. Love comic shops. You know, I started work my my entire professional career started in a comic shop. So um, you know, when I was 18, 19 years old, taking classes, uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, I got a job at the local comic shop, and ever since that gig, uh, where I worked for about five years, um, I've worked in comics. So, you know, uh, love to support local stores, um, you know, and this is a great one. So, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, Joe. All right, Bob and I are really going to be moderating this panel tonight, so I'll step in, Bob will step in, and he has been such a catalyst for this, so I do really appreciate it. And we just kind of want to do a timeline of comics and start out where comics started from, um, where they went to in the heyday, and and what happened in the 90s, and and then talk about the current stuff, and then what is the future of comics. So that's going to take a little bit of time, and then we're going to each discuss uh, things that we like about comics and, and stuff like that. So 
Bob, do you want to start us out with the first question about, um, com we also got some trivia questions we're going to throw out to people and, and see if you can answer them. And if you can, if you have a couple of questions that you have that maybe you want to try and stump the audience, maybe we've got a gift for you, okay? <laughs> so there's a... Um, Probably what two two hundred years of comic stuff on this panel right uh, here. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm at least half of that. I I'm, I'm yeah. fifty years <laughs> of comic collecting and Brandon, and I mean, so it's it's pretty cool. You might get some knowledge, and we hope to get some knowledge from you guys too. And if you're online, please you know hit us up with a message, and you can shout it out for us, and uh, we will get to your comments also. So yeah, Bob, what do you how do you want to start on uh, the well, I, I guess I'll, I'll start out with where I think we're going to end up, and that is where the future of comics are. And in order to understand that, you have to understand where we came from. And for this audience, which might be people who are really into comics, or might be just, oh, I had some comics as a kid, and my mom threw them away, <laughs> we're going to go all the way back to the back, to the, yeah, to the beginning. Um, and, you know, we, we can go back to uh, the 19th century, if you want to talk about the the yellow kid uh, from the yellow journalism days or or that sort of thing but uh, we're gonna start with how comics got started because they're everywhere now I mean you can't go to a movie theater without some comic book movie or some comic influence movie being at the at the theater or a comic book based TV show like the boys uh, which is a, a dynamite entertainment property uh, having some sort of screen presence so how did they get to be so pervasive in our culture and uh, where are they going from here because I, I think everybody kind of feels like we're in this transitional moment for comics in a way mm -hmm. we've always sort of been in transition but if you start off at the beginning of comics back when people first started taking comic book strips or cartoon strips from the newspapers and collecting them together in bound editions that's really where comic books began uh, Popeye I think was probably one of the first ones to do that uh, there wasn't any new material in that. There was just the old Popeye strips that had run for the week and then put together in a, in a bound edition and sold in a newsstand. But then Action Comics number one came out. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but the latest news is there's only 10 copies of Action Comics number one oh, yeah. still in existence. Uh, and, and going back to the 40s, you guys probably know this better than I do, but so many of those comics are rare because paper was collected for well, the war. Well, they were war. disposable, too. They weren't, they, nobody, nobody kept anything. Nobody kept nobody anything. Nobody kept anything. I mean, they didn't have the, the, the total income to, right. to collect. And yeah. that is, that's the, that's the thing that started, I think we'll get there in the 70s with the collector's mm -hmm. market and yep. how that got going right. and why that got going and how shops like this can exist, whereas everything was sold at the newsstands mm -hmm. uh, right. back then. There was no comic book stores. There were no comic book retailers. Right. But if you wanted to Think about the Silver Age comics, and let's compare and contrast them to today. What are the what are the similarities from from those not Silver Age, but Golden Age comics? You go back that far. I think you can talk about superheroes. Yeah. Superheroes are a huge, the hugest force in comic book uh, uh, storylines, still because of that first one, Superman. Uh, why do you think that is? I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest, so I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but... And, yeah. and, and, and probably the shortest, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's a nice, very nice story to tell you. I learned to read because of comics, and not as a five-year-old, more like a seven-year-old, uh, was slow. My grandparents lived down on Maryland Avenue, and our ne next-door neighbor was Davy Quinzel. You know Master David Quenzel, the martial artist teacher here, oh, uh, yeah. world champion, and he, he was a year older, and we would, my parents would bring me down, and we would walk to drug fair, that's the closest place to buy comics, and we each could buy a comic, and I, I couldn't read, and he was so patient with me, and I think it drove him crazy too, I learned to read. And it was DC. I was a DC guy. Uh, Bob Kane was my hero. I, I've read about him now. Apparently, he used everyone else's <laughs> <It's a big laughs> property. Uh, but it just it just opened my life. So after that, I didn't read another comic until Steve Hedges and I were at university, getting underground comics. Mm -hmm. And then. <clears throat> Didn't read and then made thirty some movies, 
uh, and was a, a film professor, uh, and happened to cross uh, one of my partners uh, still read comics, graphic novels. I hadn't read a graphic novel in 30 plus years or whatever. I went, holy cow, this is so good. And I don't want to go through the movie industry again. It's just, it, I'm just over it. But I said, now I can make the big movies I want now. But just do, it's, it's cinema on the page. Mm -hmm. And you're doing it reverse, right. Joe. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so, and also, the, also the other thing that I, I mean, I, I've gone from the worst horror that you can imagine <laughs> to children's properties. It's what I'm doing now because I have a wonderful neighborhood on the west side. Steve knows these these kids. We're in our eleventh year. We have a garden club, and I'm the I'm the I'm the minority. I'm the white guy in the, in the group, and it's it's wonderful. We have the best uh, garden club. So it's inspired my, and I give them books to help them read. That's excellent. And uh, free comics, we get the old comics, and new kids books. So I thought, I thought I ought to read them first, and did the same thing with graphic novels. Right. I fell in love with it. The writing is so good, and I started reading the children's properties and young adult. This stuff is so good. Uh, it just has kept me engaged, and it's kept me from. Drinking myself to death during COVID. <laughs> so, anyway, right. that's, that's the short version. And that, that was um, kind of the whole part of why we came up with this name was Engage. It was, it was all about, we want people to be engaged, get off of their computer screens for a little while and just be engaged. And that's why this area is typically a kid's play area. We have seating uh, couches here where people can sit and uh, you know parents can read a book while the kids are playing around here a little bit. And we have the books that they can play with on a table back here. And and start reading and, and that's the whole comics thing is just get kids to read something other than a computer screen right. and, and an iPad or, or a phone screen and we just want them to be engaged and that's kind of how we came up with this name and, and we just want people to, to be involved and that's why we started doing Magic the Gathering games and we're going to do board games and all kinds of fun stuff but anyway um, Brandon where did when did you start what did you start reading? Batman Adventures. Batman, all right. I, that's what I grew up with.